Since the beginning of time, man has been attracted to the water and has had a love for boats to carry him on it. Even in this day and age, the joy of being on the water in a boat you've built with your own hands is hard to beat. This tape is designed to show you simple, proven construction processes that will allow you to have as much fun building your boat as you will have using it. Before beginning the assembly of your Don Hill 10-foot mini drifter, let's take a moment to become familiar with the pieces included in the kit and the tools you need. For the purpose of this videotape, we've taken apart a completed mini drifter. The pieces you see here have been finished cut, varnished with screw holes, pre-drilled, and countersunk. Many of the pieces in your kit will be oversized, so you will be making the final close-fitting cuts. We recommend you pre-finish your kit pieces as we have. These are the small and large transom pieces. When finished, they become the two ends of the mini drifter. These are the sides. Like the bottom and transom blanks, they are made of marine plywood. The three pre-assembled ribs give the boat its shape and strength. They're made of vertical grain fur. The bottom in your kit will need to be trimmed to fit. The seat assembly is made of two threaded galvanized pipe seat supports, four tackle well sides, the seat top, two tackle well bottoms, two support brackets, and a pair of pre-assembled notch seat sides. These are the pieces for the floorboard assemblies. Each assembly requires three braces. Two are used to connect the floorboards to each other, and the third is used to attach the assembly to the boat. Two of the 10-foot beveled oak pieces are the chines. They join the sides and the bottom of the boat. The four other 10-foot oak pieces get routed and become the handrails. These are the wedge and oar blocks. Four wedge blocks serve as spaces between the handrails, front and back. The oar blocks mount between the ribs one and two. The two skid boards attach to the sides of the boat. The anchor plates reinforce the large transom. Finally, the hardware kit contains all the fasteners you'll need to complete your 10-foot mini drifter. Now let's go over to the tools you are going to need. For the final cutting of the oversized pieces, you'll need a scroll saw, a circular saw, a cross-cut hand saw, and a hacksaw for cutting bolts to length. To shape the handrails, a router, a drill motor for drilling holes and installing screws, an assortment of twist bits, and a hole saw. For sanding and finished trimming, an orbital sander and a belt sander. You will also need a caulking gun and at least five five-inch C-clamps. Hi, my name is John Denar. I'm here today basically to show you how to assemble your 10-foot mini drifter. Today we're going to start with our, our small transom mitt. This is your transom blank. Here we have your left and your right transom braces. And here's your bottom transom brace. Okay, let's get going. We're going to start by first... The construction the techniques demonstrated Which during the assembly of the small transom are the ones to be used throughout the construction of the boat. Brush the edges of the pieces, then while carefully holding or clamping them in place, drill and countersink the screw holes. Install two screws, one at each end when possible. For the transom braces, use number eight one-inch screws. Follow this procedure for all three of the transom braces. Next, your screw. Then you go to the other side, put on the other side, make sure it's flush. Now these parts are already pre-cut for you in the kit. The only thing you have to do is the screwing itself. The pilot screws allow you to neatly reposition the pieces after the application of the adhesive and keep the pieces in place while the rest of the screws are put in. Installing the screws is a two-step process. First, drill the screw hole using a number eight countersink bit, then install the screws. Having two drills, one for each step, makes the process much easier. The transom blank and brakes pieces you'll receive in your kit will be oversized. Trimming them to the size and shape shown here takes place near the end of the assembly process. In Carefully way, tighten each side. screw. Over tightening will cause splitting and surface chipping and as can be seen here. Now the most important thing on doing this 
is now you have to have an adhesive on the back of this. Okay, the reason why I put two screws in each one of these is because when you get your adhesive on here, it's really messy. And so by doing this, Once all the trans and brace pieces have been place, positioned with pilot screws, you are ready to apply the adhesive. We recommend 3M5200. Careful application of the adhesive will save you cleanup time and give you a more beautiful finished boat. Ease the pilot screws back out. And all you do is you flip it over on the other side. Take out your adhesive. You don't need a lot, but you need enough to cover the wood. I do it, of course, sort of like a snake there, and that kind of helps it spread a little bit. Apply the adhesive in a snake-like pattern. Smooth and spread it with a putty knife. knife so that the entire surface is covered. And spread it on the board, like so. That's just about right enough to me. You have your two holes already piled in there. Put it in place. Reinstall Reach the pilot screws. Then your the next step after that is what you want to do is put in your other your other screw holes. I start by going. Now you are ready to put in the rest of the screws in each there, piece. Drill a hole halfway has. between the two pilot there. screws. Then split that distance in half with two more holes. Finally, move toward the outside edge of the brace piece, splitting the distance between each of the existing holes to complete the array of screw holes. On pieces with beveled edges like this transom brace, be careful when placing screws close to the edge. Check to be certain that your screws will be inside the beveled edge. Otherwise, your screw might split the wood. This is the way the small transom assembly looks when completed. The large transom is put together in the same way and should look like this. Now we're ready to go to our next pieces. Next we will build the removable seat assembly, consisting of the rowing seat and tackle wells. Begin by butting the outside pieces of the tackle wells against the seat sides as shown. And you've got the old famous wood. We're basically start with Pre drill the holes before right applying here. the glue. Two screws are required at each joint. Right Be sure to center each so screw to avoid splitting the tackle well sides. Place. And then you've got to line your, your drill bit right even where it's going right down the middle right here. With the seat side notches face up, flush up the tackle well bottoms with the edges. Pre drill, glue, and install the screws. With the seat side assembly right side up, fit the inner sides of the tackle wells into place. Again, pre-drill and glue them before installing the screws. Finally, fit the plywood seat top between the two tackle wells. Attach it by following the standard procedure of first drilling and countersinking the pilot holes gluing the joints and installing the screws. Again here, avoiding your screw holes in. Okay. Then also, when you're screwing these holes right here on the side, bring the ones in a little bit to avoid these screw holes again. That basement there, this is your front seat. Your kit will come with three pre-assembled ribs. You'll need to cut okay. the drain hole in the bottom of each one. First, mark the center of the rib. Then, make a guide notch with the hole saw pilot fit. There's a little groove right there for this to travel on. And then, we're going to slowly at first... Carefully cut the drain hole as shown. Your kit will come with pieces for two floorboard assemblies. This is a completed large floorboard assembly. 
Both floorboard assemblies are put together in the same way. Start by pacing the floorboards onto the braces so that the spacing between them is even. Install two pilot screws in each board. Basically, you can see here, you do have a gap here, and you do have a gap here. And here, save you some time, if I take a pencil... Mark the position of the boards with a pencil. And then, by doing a marking that... Back out the pilot screws to apply the adhesive. Use the pencil marks as guides to There's avoid more. getting the adhesive go, on the exposed the surfaces. Before getting into the boat assembly process, let's go over the preparation of the handrails. Your kit contains four 10-foot pieces of oak stock for making the inside and outside handrails. Two of these rails need two of their edges routed with a quarter-inch bead. On the other two, we put a bead on one side, again, a bead on the other two. The other two get three of their edges routed. So on two, you have two beads, and on two, you have three beads. When routing, move the router in the same direction as the grain using short, overlapping strokes to make the initial cuts. This will help to avoid lifting the grain and creating splinters. Now we're ready to begin framing the boat. Referring to your instruction manual for dimensions, mark out the rib positions on the plywood panels. Begin by flushing up the two side panels. A black tip marker makes it easy to see the tick marks during installation. Transfer the marks to the other panel on the plywood's edge. This way, they're both Placing a T-square at each of the tick marks mark the location for the installation of the screws that attach the ribs to the sides. A set of extra hands and sawhorses makes connecting the sides to the transom go more smoothly. Hold the transom at an angle to the sides so that the beveled transom brace flushes up to the sides. Follow the standard procedure of drilling pilot holes, installing and then removing the pilot screws, applying the adhesive, repositioning the pieces, this then installing the full array of screws. Follow this procedure to first connect the large transom to one of the sides, and then both side panels to the small now transom. Now we're ready to move on to the other end. Right? It's exactly done the same way the large transom the side panels. Leaving the pilot screws partially through the side panels makes repositioning the adhesive covered edges a snap. Using C-clamps, clamp rib number two into place using the marks you made earlier on the side panels. Be sure to center the rib side and not the rib bottom on the tick marks. Clamping rib number two into place helps to position the side panel for its final connection to the large transom. The boat is now beginning to look like something. Now that both transoms are attached to the sides, you're ready to install the ribs. Double check to make sure that the ribs line up with the tick marks. Allow the sides to extend slightly above the rib bottom. Install three screws at each rib, starting two inches in from the top and bottom. The ribs do not get glued to the side panels. The ribs do not get glued to the side panels. Once the ribs are fastened into place, you're ready for the chines and then the bottom. To attach the chines, begin by installing a pilot screw through the chine into rib number two. Position the chine one eighth of an inch below the edge of the plywood at the level of the rib bottom. With the adhesive applied, completely clamp the chine into place. Using a handsaw, 
Carefully trim your overside chine flush with the transom. If you are short of C-clamps, complete half of the chine at a time. From the inside, install three quarter inch screws about every two inches. Before removing the clamps, install one and a half inch screws at each end and into each rib. Remember to center the screws and countersink the holes. It's normal for some of the adhesive to ooze from behind the chine. Remove it as soon as possible. Scrape off as much as you can with a putty knife. For the final cleanup, use a rag and acetone. Protect your hands and make sure that the ventilation is good. The bottom attaches directly to the chine. Use a belt sander to flush the side panels to the chines and ribs. Check them with a straight edge to ensure good contact of the bottom with the ribs and chines. Position the oversized bottom blank on the finished frame. Install four pilot screws, two on each side flanking rib number two. Score the bottom as shown and remove it for trimming. Use a liberal amount of adhesive caulk on the chines, transom, and rib bottoms. Leave the pilot screws in the trim bottom to assist you in repositioning it. Use number eight one inch screws about every two inches. Work from the middle to the ends, alternating sides every six screws. Again, it is best to clean off the extra adhesive as soon as possible. Every Remember to skip over the drain hole area when installing the screws through the bottom into the ribs. Belt sand the side edges of the bottom flush with the chimes. And we do the bottom piece first. And again here, we're going to put a pilot hole. Use one and a quarter inch screws to install the front and rear transom pieces. Start with the bottom piece. Use the standard procedure for attachment. Cut the oversized pieces to fit exactly as you go. Again. The rub strip is the easiest of all the pieces to install. Adhesive is not necessary. Center the strip on rib number two. Attach it with two screws to each of the three ribs. The procedure for installing the outside handrail is the same as that used to install the chines. Use the oak stock with two routed edges. The routed edges face to the outside. Begin by clamping it near the center and working to the ends. Again, allow the plywood to extend about an eighth of an inch above the handrail. Let the ends of the handrail run wild for trimming after the pieces are screwed into place. It does have an overhang, then you just take your handsaw and cut it off right there, double and flush. Follow the standard procedure. The inside handrails are made from the 10-foot oak stock pieces with three routed edges. Leave the one unrouted edge to the top facing outward. Begin by trimming one end to fit the angle of the transom. Once fitted, attach it with a one and a half inch screw to the transom brace. Work 
to the other end, attaching the handrail to each rib in turn using the quarter inch carriage bolts provided in the hardware kit, as shown. Completely tighten each nut. Saw off here. the extra length. Take the axle away. We're just right up against that nut. And replace there. the nut with a cap nut. The fitting of the handrail to the other transom end is something of a whittling process. Rough cut it first, then fine cut it. Finally, belt sand it if necessary to achieve a close fit. Next, install the aura lock blocks. Make a mark on the handrail 10 inches from rib number two toward the large transom. Line the center hole of the aura lock block up with this mark. Face the beveled edge to the outside of the boat. I like put the angle edge on the outside. And now that 10, 10 inch mark that I had, I'm taking the hole and centering it back. And I'll do it on the other side. Then your aura blocks are are exactly in the same spot. And I like putting them up a little high. It gives them the oars. Clamp it in. Clamp it into place and drill for two quarter inch carriage bolts. Finish with cap nuts as you did with the handrail. Install the wedge blocks in each corner in the same way. Well, Brush the corner gone. wedge blocks to the top of the handrail. I'll show you how the little book. Your boat's serial number is stamped into one of the wedge blocks. Be sure it's facing up for easy reference. See the plan book for Coast Guard registration information. Your boat is now structurally complete and ready for the finishing touches. Trim the ribs flush with the handrails as shown. Cutting halfway through from each side helps to control splintering of the edges. Use the angle of the handrails to guide the saw blade when cutting the ribs and the corners of the transoms. It sticks up a little bit. So, same thing. Put your hand, your, your hand saw flat in the same method and at that angle. Then you belt sand it in nice and smooth. Cut up these cuts with a belt sander before routing a finished bead on the inside of the handrail. Pre-drill, as we always do. Attach the anchor reinforcing up. plates to the inside like and outside of the small transom panel. Place these plates slightly higher than the transom. Sand them flush. Use the standard fastening procedure. Drill a 3 8 inch hole for installation of the eye bolt. Be sure the bolt head. goes through the transom brace on the inside. Trim the bolt to length. Both the large and small floorboard assemblies are installed in the same way. Measure from the rib to the transom to determine the length of the boards. Rough cut the floorboards, allowing an extra half inch for the final beveled cut. Position the assembly against the transom and mark the placement of the brace piece. Install the brace and then recut the floorboards and install the entire assembly. Installing the front uh, 
floorboards there, and that's how they're supposed to look like. At last, you are ready to now install the seat assembly. Okay, the seat is mounted on pipe brackets to allow the oarsman to adjust the seat for comfort and to balance the weight in the boat. This is our jig. Using the template provided, position the waist nut. Install only the top screw at this time to allow for final adjustments. Play with the positioning of the mounting hardware to ensure a good fit go and in. smooth operation. The seat notches stay. are 41 and 3 quarter go. inches center to center. What we first do is put it in Clamp the plywood seat supports into place on rib number 2 and screw in the pipes. and the operation of the seat before installing the rest of the screws. Here, that completes a 10-foot mini drifter, and I'll see you on the river. Okay, now since we finished our project here, let's go have some fun. If you've spent much time around small boats, you've probably noticed thousands of large and small differences in the way boats are designed. You've also noticed that design evolves from use. Well, today we're going to look at a uniquely western boat, the Mackenzie Drift Boat, and see how it's the perfect boat for its job. Once you've seen a Mackenzie, you'll never forget it. It's clear that the Mackenzie Drift Boat is a boat of distinction. It appears to be some modern adaptation of an 18th century dory, with its high, sharp bow and classically curved hull. But the Mackenzie is not a dory, and the bow is not the bow. It's the stern. The story of how this curious design evolved is also the story of the growth of a region, because the drift boat played an important part in the early days of Oregon. In Central Oregon, the importance of the drift boat is commonly recognized. In fact, there's an organization dedicated to its history. It's called the Oregon River Museum, and its president, Dave Rodriguez, gave me some background on the boat. Well, the drift boat evolved uh, out of a need through history for a boat to um, run rivers uh, safely for uh, people. Like the Mackenzie, uh, there's a lot of white water. Uh, when guiding first began in the early 1900s, uh, the boat started out as crude, uh, low-sided board and batten boats uh, that weighed quite a bit. They were, they, their ceiling was out of tar. And they had to find a way to, uh, to make the trips more safer. People were running the rivers here, especially on the McKenzie River, to fish. Uh, it, it provided a way of life. Uh, it provided uh, uh, food for the table, um, sport for uh, some people who found out about it from uh, other parts of the nation, uh, they started visiting uh, ex-presidents and our presidents, uh, movie stars. Uh, the Mackenzie became a very popular river. The evolution of today's drift boat began at about the turn of the century. To the boat builders of the time, it was clear that the often crudely built rowing skiffs of the era were not adequate. Uh, that weighed quite a bit. They were, they, their ceiling was out of tar. And they had to find a way to, uh, to make the trips more safer. People were running the rivers here, especially on the McKenzie River, to fish. Uh, it, it provided a way of life. Uh, it provided uh, uh, food for the table, um, sport for uh, some people who found out about it from uh, other parts of the nation. Uh, they started visiting uh, ex-presidents and our presidents. Uh, movie stars. Uh, the Mackenzie became a very popular river. 
The evolution of today's drift boat began at about the turn of the century. To the boat builders of the time, it was clear that the often crudely built rowing skiffs of the era were not adequate for running the river. The first drift boats were narrow, hard-turning, low-sided skiffs. They were tough to maneuver through rapids, and they were heavy. In the 20s, the design of the boat began to change. For safety in the rapids, the boat became wider and the sides grew higher. A pronounced curve or rake was added to the bottom. The rake made it easier for the oarsmen to maneuver through the rapids. The drift boat began to have a terrific impact on the local economy. Recreational fishing brought in a lot of money and the boat became a specialized tool of fishing guides. For many years, rough and tumble drift boat parades were staged in its honor. But the evolution of the boat still was not complete. By the late 40s, the boat had acquired a high flat stern, but when traveling downriver, the stern of the boat would stall in the standing waves of rapids. Then the force of the water would turn the boat sideways and capsize it, potentially life-threatening to all on board. The next step in the evolution was to add a sharp bow to the boat, but because the boat is actually back downriver, the point was added to the stern. Now the boat could cut through standing waves. This is a classic example of how the Mackenzie drift boat actually works. We're in a fast moving current, but without much effort we can hold the boat right here and right steady and then slowly work our way down onto a fishing hole. The boat is curved like this. And so the water is actually...